Hello, my name is Aaron Fields, and this is going to be uh, a real quick video on how to take advantage of another uh, stack-based buffer overflow vulnerability in an email server. So this is SL mail. Um, last time we were attacking surge mail. Um, SL mail has a problem where if you shove too much data into the password parameter, it overflows onto the stack, and eventually you can control EIP. So of course, you need to figure out where exactly EIP is at in the buffer that you're sending. Um, so if you watch my previous video, uh, you can see how to do that with um, uh, Metasploit tools, pattern create, pattern offset. Um, so first thing we're going to do, I've already found uh, the offset of EIP. It happens to be 4,646. Um, and so I'm just going to show you what our input looks like on the stack when you send it to the program. Um, so this is just a really quick and dirty uh, little Python script to do that. Um, creates a buffer, puts it in the password parameter, and shoves it off to the server. Um, so we'll run this. By the way, this is... Um, Um, this is Windows XP Service Pack 3 uh, that we're running here. Um, so as you can see, we've got our uh, hex A's and then our hex B's over EIP, which overwrote perfectly, and then a bunch of C's afterwards. Um, so you'll notice that ESP points to our C's, and so what we can do is actually search the program for um, a jump ESP instruction and then uh, overwrite EIP with an address to that instruction and then put our shell code at ESP. Um, so let's restart the server and reattach to the process. And we're just going to search for Actually, let me run this. All commands and all modules, jump ESP. And we're just going to use um, this one right here. Um, so we need to obviously switch the ordering of this to little endian. Um, so it will be. 5-3-9-3. You would hope that with time um, you get faster at doing this, but so far I have not gotten much faster at doing this. Perhaps I just have not spent enough time <laughs> doing this. Um, but anyway, we've got our address um, in our buffer, and so make sure we save it. And we'll run it again. And that points to this is ESP, uh, or I'm sorry, EIP, um, or it was. Follow this in the disassembler. Jump ESP. Sweet. 
so now we just need to pick out our shell code. Um, and so I have found some shell code already and picked it out. So we'll just take that onto the end of our buffer. And what this shellcode actually does is adds a new um, user, a, a new administrator to the machine. So as you can see right now, this is the only administrator on the machine. Um, I got this from shellstorm.org. I'll post a link in uh, the video description. Um, but yeah, it adds a new administrator to the machine and then terminates uh, the process. And so I don't actually want the process to terminate uh, just because if you, um, if I was attacking you, right, and you notice that your mail server was crashing, um, you might realize that something's wrong. Um, and so I would rather be stealthy and add a user to the machine but not crash the mail server. Um, so before I show you how to do that, we're just going to try running the shellcode um, against the uh, um, the server and see if it works. And I am actually going to add just a few nops before our shellcode. I could just jump straight into it, um, but whatever. We can add a few nops. Alright, process terminated like it was supposed to. Um, let's see if we have a new user. We sure do. So our code, shellcode ran, seems to work alright. Um, the next step is going to be uh, getting rid of um, whatever it is that makes it exit. Um, so if we come back over here, we can actually put some breakpoints right there. Um, bef right before our shellcode. Um, so rather than just sliding right into our shellcode, the debugger will actually break and we'll have a chance to look at our shellcode in the debugger before it actually executes. Um, so we'll blast this off again. Alright, we hit our first breakpoint. Let's just see what this is doing jump short, call that address, All right, so it jumps back up here, pop EBX, set EAX to zero, move an address um, to kernel32.winexec, um, and notice that EBX contains this big old string here, um, containing cmd.exe slash c, right, which means execute this command, um, adding a user to the machine. Um, it's moving that into EBX and then calling EBX, right? So we'll hop over that. Um, another set EAX to zero. Ah, uh, exit process. So we don't actually want it to exit the process. And so what we can try doing here is simply nopping out those two instructions, uh, or uh, bytes, I should say. Um, and so what happens, though, right, is if we step through these, we hit our call again, which pops us back up to where we were at the beginning of our shellcode. Um, and so now we are in a loop, which is no good because it's infinite. And so there's probably a much more elegant solution than the solution that I came up with. Um, but I mean, I'm relatively new to uh, exploit development, and so I just did what came to mind. I notice up here there's an EB16, which is a jump short, right? And it jumps, in this case, jumps us down to our call. And so I just wondered what happens if I put an EB16 right here. So we'll edit it. EB16, okay. It's a jump short way down to here, which is another jump to somewhere. I don't know where. But let's just see what happens.
In this case, we still hit our call. We'll go through it one more time. And yeah, we jump down there. I'm just going to play it. Wow. Boom. That works perfectly. I don't even think... Uh, I don't even think we got an access violation. Perhaps we did, but I must have missed it. So we'll just change this to EB16. Um, this is, if you didn't notice, this was uh, the op codes for the call directly after um, the, instruction, the instructions we had originally knocked out. And so I just changed this to the op codes for a jump short. Save it. And come back here. Run it again. Wait for it to hit once more. And you can already see that it is a jump above there. So we jump down. Oh, there's the uh, access violation. Um, but let's just uh, detach from this process once, just so you can see. We'll delete this user does not exist. Run our exploit. Done. Oh, I know what the problem is. Forgot to put an ops there. Yep, I am a noob. Now we'll run it. And there is our administrator. Um, to be honest with you, I don't know what the password is, but um, he shows up right here, so that is pretty cool. Um, monk is password. There we go. Helps if you uh, turn your caps lock off. Um, so yeah, there we are. Um, logged into the account that we added. Um, so this was another video for INFA 725 with uh, Dr. Ingebrigtsen. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Hopefully you learned something and are going to put it to good use, of course. Um, so until next